Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Crazy Cycling channel. Today I thought I'd do something a little bit different and show you guys my EDC, my everyday carry. Now I have to admit that I'm not very disciplined with this kind of thing and I don't even carry all the stuff every day, which I know that a lot of prepper type people probably wouldn't understand, but in my opinion it's much more important to have an open mind and get some life experience that allows you to solve unexpected events and problems through improvisation and by talking to people um, and things like that rather than being prepared for every situation out there because I think you want to be kind of reasonable as well I mean you could carry an entire toolbox with you every day if you wanted to and I've seen people who do that but I mean that's in 99% of your time you're not going to need any of that stuff and it's not going to be comfortable you're going to look like an idiot and I mean how is walking or running even comfortable I mean that's got to count for something too, right? The, if something holds you down, it weighs you down so much that you can't even really walk or run properly, what's the point of that, right? And it's also a little bit like cycle touring. With cycle touring, you could carry everything you need to fix your bike. And I'm thinking about this right now for my summer cycle tours. How far do I go? In particular, do I need a pliers wrench or, or a crescent wrench or something like that? That will give me the ability to take off my cassette, take my headset apart, take my bottom bracket apart, but I need to balance that against the likelihood of that happening. And also the fact that you can probably find a crescent wrench anywhere in the world if you ask enough people. So maybe it's better to just carry the specific tool you need, maybe a cassette tool, which is very, very small. And then you can ask someone or get a crescent wrench if you really need that tool, which you probably won't anyway. And I guess that's kind of my EDC philosophy as well. You know, I just think I, I, I think you have to be kind of realistic. Maybe that's a little bit naive, but I'm just not going to carry that much stuff with me. I just know I'm not going to do it. So I'd rather just have the stuff that I will actually carry. And if I come into a situation where I'm, I need something else, which is unlikely, um, I'll deal with that situation then. And it's very, very unlikely that I'll end up in a situation where I, I won't be able to survive uh, without something that I could have been carrying, right? Anyway, let's get into my EDC now. I know that was kind of a long intro, um, but we're gonna go through uh, the two knives I have. So those are a Victorinox Compact. This is the knife I try and carry with me pretty much anywhere. And then I also have an Ed Mahoney Landslide. I'll show you the stuff more in detail in a second, but this is uh, the knife I carry with me when I'm working normally. Then um, I'm gonna go through the two watches I have. So the watch I usually carry or usually wear is the Casio GW-M5600. I've just done a review on this watch. And then I also have a Casio Lineage. This is a LIW-M700. This is more of a dressier watch, not strictly necessary. I, I've thought about selling this watch so many times, but I've hung on to it because I do like it quite a lot. So I'll show you those watches in a sec. As far as a phone, my phone is a Motorola G30. This is a really pretty budget phone, but it does everything I need it to. The camera's pretty decent. And I've had good luck with Motorola phones in the past, so I keep, keep using them. I've tried other stuff and they've just not been as good as Motorola. So that's why I keep going with Motorola. And then the wallet, if I can find it, there it is, is a custom leather wallet. Somewhere in there, I think. There we go. The wallet is uh, this leather card sleeve. I got this on Etsy from a seller called Jujubes. It's just a card sleeve. I don't carry cash with me. I just have uh, one credit card, a driver's license, and a debit card in here. And if I really need cash, I'll go to an ATM and get some cash. But this is just super minimalist, super lightweight, really good quality. Um, so I guess that's pretty much it. Let's just go take a closer look at some of the stuff now. Um, and yeah, I'll show you some of the features of the stuff I like to carry and how I carry it. Can you guys see the little snake down there? I'm filming this video in the middle of April and it's a pretty cold day today. It's probably about 45 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. It's sunny, but I'm really surprised the snake is out. I, I would have thought that it would have been too cold for him. But how cool is that? I'll have a look later and see if I can identify the snake in a field guide and, and put it, annotate the video. But let's get back into the EDC now. Okay, so let's take a look at my knives first. So this is a Victorinox Compact, and I try to carry this knife pretty much every day. There are certain situations where you can't carry a knife. 
obviously airports, schools, also certain places around the world. Like if I'm traveling, I, I, it depends on what I'm doing. But for example, if you ever go to London, there are a lot of places in London where you can't have any sharp objects, like whether it's knives, scissors, uh, anything like that. So in those situations, I'd leave this uh, in my hotel room or whatever. Um, and they will catch you because you have to go through metal detector to get into a lot of the museums, for example. But anyway, this Victorinox Compact is a, is a pretty well-known knife. And the cool thing about it is that it is really slim, but has a lot of features. So I'll just go through them really quickly here. It has a pair of scissors. That's kind of the main thing. And I resisted the idea of scissors for so long because I thought they just kind of wear out and you don't really need them. But actually scissors are really, really useful for cutting a little piece of thread, you know, your fingernails is kind of the main one, things like that. Uh, I actually use them quite a bit. It also has a, of course, regular knife blade. Wow, this is pretty dirty. <laughs> I need to go clean that. Um, but it's always good to have a knife. Usually I use this for making lunch somewhere if I'm out and about. Uh, and the great thing, of course, about a Swiss Army knife is that they are instantly recognizable around the world and almost nobody feels threatened by a Swiss Army knife. So that's another good reason to carry one. And again, the compact is cool just because it's so slim. You also get this combination tool, which is a combination can opener, bottle opener, and screwdriver. It's also a very light duty pry bar. And that's also good to have. You never really know. I do use that for opening cans quite a bit, just if I'm cooking somewhere where there's no can opener or whatever. Um, so it's pretty cool that they have that. And basically on some of these Swiss Army knives like the compact, they got rid of the small blade and got rid of the layer that has the can opener and the bottle opener. And they just had this, use this combination tool instead. And that's pretty cool. That makes this knife, again, so slim. So those are the main tools. Then you have a cork, corkscrew. But the cool thing here is you get a little eyeglass screwdriver as well, which I don't use that much, but you know, it's kind of nice to know it's there. If you have some sort of a little screw, you can usually make this work, even if it's a Phillips. Uh, and the corkscrew is good as a corkscrew. And it also can be good for undoing knots or just like picking into things like just as a little pick. So I like that much more than the Phillips screwdriver you get on certain, certain other Swiss Army knives. Then we have the hook, which I don't think I've ever used the hook and I've also never used the nail file here. I think an awl would probably be better, but I mean, this doesn't take up much space. So that's kind of cool as well. And then we have the scale tools. So we have the tweezers. This is really, really useful. I get splinters all the time. I don't wear gloves as much as I should. And they're not the best tweezers in the world. Actually, they're not very good at all, but they, they can get the job done. So I think it's really useful to have them. Actually, the Victorinox pliers you get on certain Swiss Army knife models are really, really good as tweezers, but then, then you, need, you need a bigger knife. Um, but it is good to have those tweezers for in a pinch. Then you've got the toothpick, which I actually use, which is probably a bit disgusting, but I do use that for my teeth sometimes if I get something stuck in there. And then the other thing, which I always forget that I have, is the pen. Uh, and the pen is really useful because sometimes you need to write down a phone number or something, and this pen is pressurized, so you can write, you know, on your hand, you should be able to. I never use this pen, so yeah, let's see if it'll write on this log. Yeah, it will write on the log, and then it'll write on my finger. So it's really, really useful to have the pen as well. So that's the uh, Victorinox Compact. And again, I carry this knife. I mean, in, in reality, I probably carry it 50% of the time, uh, but I do try and carry this most places because this packs a lot of useful features into a small package. If you want the next level up, in my opinion, you really need pliers. And I'm just not gonna start carrying around a multi-tool with pliers, that's just, not gonna happen. So this is kind of the best compromise that I came up with. And I've tried a lot of different knives over the years. Okay, and then the other knife I sometimes carry is this one, which is an Ed Mahoney Landslide. And this is a, is a pretty cool knife. I heard about this knife from a YouTube channel called Cutler, Cutlery Lover. And I use this knife uh, when I'm working. Uh, so, you know, if I'm doing some sort of outdoor work or whatever, I like carrying this knife for, I don't know, cutting up boxes or tape or whatever else. Uh, this is a pretty cool knife to have. And what's great about this knife is, first of all, I really like 
with the blade shape here, it's got this kind of a, what, whatever that's called, I guess that's a, is that a clip? No, it's not a clip point, it's a, I don't know, whatever that, that uh, blade style is, is really good because you're cutting with this part of the knife here, you know, when you're cutting onto a surface. This knife also has a G10 handle, which is kind of a plasticky, resiny kind of a thing, but a really tough, reinforced type of a resin. And the other thing that's pretty cool about this knife is that it is a slip joint, which means there's no lock, but it has all these intermediate stops. So it's a very safe slip joint. So you can kind of stab this into things, you know, and not really have to worry about the knife at all. And also I forgot to mention that this knife is made of D2 steel, which is a high carbon, semi-stainless type of steel. So this knife will hold its edge for a very, very long time. And the really cool thing about this knife is that you get all that and the knife only cost me, I bought it in Germany, it cost me 30 euros, but that's like way under $50. I think it's a little more expensive now, but you don't really see D2 knives with G10 handles for under $50. And the construction on this knife is, is really, really good. You can see the blade is totally centered there. Uh, it's, you know, it feels totally durable. I've not had any problems with it. And it's pretty cool. It's not strictly necessary. I've thought about selling this knife so many times because it just seems superfluous and I, I don't really need it. But this knife is so unusual that I actually, I tried selling it once on eBay and nobody bid on it. So I'm just keeping it for now. And by the way, Ed Mahoney is a German company, uh, which is kind of funny because that's not really a German name. Um, but I think this knife is made in Asia somewhere. It doesn't, it doesn't say on the knife. I went to their website earlier today and it says they import knives. So it could, it could be China. It could be Japan. It could be Germany, but it doesn't say anywhere where it's made and I couldn't find it on their website. But the quality here is really, really phenomenal. So that's a pretty cool knife that I use, I guess, for more heavy duty stuff than the compact, which just has that little blade there, which is good for like picnics and stuff like that. Okay, now let's talk about watches. And this is the only thing that I actually do carry every day. I could probably count on, on one hand the number of times I haven't worn a watch in the past like 20 years. Uh, but the watch I normally wear is this G-Shock GW-M5600. I have done a, a review on this recently, but I didn't really show any close up. So there you go, there's the watch. It's got the red stripe around the display there. It's very, very thin. It's got a solar panel. It's got uh, a multiband five, which is an atomic clock feature, waterproof. It's got a backlight, uh, countdown timers, alarms, all that sort of stuff. And it's really, really intuitive to use. It's lightweight, it's unobtrusive, it looks pretty good. And I really, really, really like this watch. I don't have anything negative to say about this watch, except that I'm getting bored with it because I have had it for about 15 years. However, they make this model in other colors, um, which is pretty cool too. So if you have a, if you want something a little bit different, a little flashier, which, you know, if I was buying a watch now, I'd probably get something a little flashier. But when I bought this, I wanted something pretty subdued. So I got the blue one here, but this is an excellent, excellent watch. It's very, very tough, rugged. I've used it outdoors. You know, you can just, you know, <laughs> I mean, I don't want to break it, but this watch will deal with you know, whatever life will throw at you. This watch is really, really great. Um, so yeah, I guess I didn't mention how much this stuff, I think I did mention that was about under $50. The compact, I checked this morning and it's listed for 55, but I know I didn't pay that much. I think I paid like 20 or 30 for that. Um, this here is a $100 watch, which I mean, that I think seems a little expensive, but if you consider that I've had it for 15 years, that's pretty, pretty good. That's virtually nothing per year. Uh, so that's the watch I usually wear. And then I also have this Casio Lineage. This is an LIW-M700. And this is a very, very cool watch, but I hardly ever wear it because I'm always wearing this one. Uh, so this is a, an analog watch that has like digital watch features in it. And I don't wear this watch enough to really remember how it works, but this watch can deal with two time zones. It has a solar panel, it's an atomic watch, it has a countdown timer, it has alarms, uh, it can deal with daylight saving time, what else can it do? It has, you know, 24 hour dial there, um, stopwatches, all that sort of stuff. It, it just uses the second hand as a little pointer to show you what mode you're in or the second hand will work as the stop stopwatch feature. Um, 
And that's kind of why one of the reasons I got the watch, I ended up actually, I don't really use those features, but I also got this watch because it, it looks pretty cool. And I've had really good luck with Casio. I mean, Casio is way more affordable than a lot of the other watches out there. And the quality you get for the price is phenomenal. This watch has sapphire glass, a really good stainless steel band. You know, it's not just some cheap folded thing. It's, it's actually really nice. The dial has this kind of like purplish, um, grayish color which i think is pretty cool you know it's all stainless steel the buttons and everything and this watch was about well i checked this morning and it's selling for about 200 dollars, which is probably what i paid for the watch maybe a little bit less and for Sa even just for sapphire glass that's a phenomenal deal so that's an amazing watch casio lineage check it out if you're in in the market for something that's a bit more of a dress watch i, I do really like this watch it feels great i just you know don't really wear it as much as I'd like to because I'm always wearing that. So I've thought about selling this watch too, but it's another one that's kind of not very well known, so I don't know if it would sell. By the way, I got this watch on a website called sakurawatches.com, S-A-K-U-R-A. It's a J Japan domestic model watch, it's called. They're called Casio JDM, uh, Japan domestic market. Um, and it, I, it's technically the gray market, but the, the, the website is reputable and you can find all sorts of Casios like this on that website. So that's, that's the other watch. Um, but anyway, now let's go ahead and I'll show you my wallet and then I'll show you my phone. Okay, so here's my wallet. And as you can see, it's just a card sleeve. This is super, super minimalist. And I got this wallet off Etsy from a seller called Jujubes. And it's been excellent. I've had this wallet for, I think it's like six or seven years. And it's still in really good condition. You know, the leather's worn a little bit, but I love this wallet. It's super, super lightweight. It's very, very minimalist. And it keeps me from carrying too much crap around with me. So all I keep in this wallet is my driver's license, a debit card and a credit card. And, you know, usually I try and buy everything with a credit card. And if I really need cash, I get it out with a debit card. That's how I do it. Um, and it works out really, really well for me. Uh, before I had this wallet, I had a really fat wallet. I think it even had a chain on it and, um, you know, it had a coin pouch and all that junk. And it's just, again, I just don't want to carry that much stuff with me. I just want something slim and light. I can carry this in any clothing, no problem at all. Um, and it's been really, really excellent. Um, you know, it is made of leather, which I've talked about before that there's ethical issues associated with that. And, you know, the older I get, the more I'm trying to get away from the idea of leather, but it is a very durable material. Uh, you know, it's kind of a byproduct, but it is a byproduct of a very nasty industry. So I don't know, you have to kind of weigh that, I guess. Um, but it is certainly durable, it's natural. And there's some uh, blue jay flying around up here. Um, I, I like this wallet very much. This wallet is currently listed for $40, which I personally think is quite a lot. The seller is based in Thailand. Um, but I don't think I paid that much for it. I think I paid more like 20 and it's been really, really good. And considering that it's lasted me like six or seven years with basically, you know, it's got some signs of use, but that's just character. It's not had any issues. I think that's a really good deal. You know, if you get a cheap wallet, it'll probably fall apart after a short amount of time. It'll be that plasticky kind of leather. This is like real, real leather. Sometimes I do kind of put some leather conditioner on this but to be honest I usually forget and it's you know pretty fine I guess there's a little bit of just you know you can see that it's a little dry so maybe I will put some proofite on that later which is a bike saddle leather conditioner but uh yeah that's the wallet absolutely love it and I absolutely love the idea of only carrying a couple cards and not carrying cash um so yeah okay so finally let's talk about my phone so this is a Motorola G30 and I like this phone quite a bit. So I'm not the kind of person who carries a phone with me all the time. I don't do any gaming or anything like that. I use a phone basically to get information when I'm traveling, you know, for all the normal authentic authentication stuff, like banking type stuff, check my emails. I listen to music with this and I also use the camera. And uh, this phone is, is just fine for all that stuff. Um, you know, I, I can't remember the exact specifications, but it has a decent amount of RAM, a decently fast processor, and it just does everything without a hitch. 
But the other thing I really like about Motorola phones is they don't come with bloatware. So this phone doesn't have any junk on it. It's just stock Android and it works really well. I've had Motorola's in the past as well. And, you know, I've tried some other stuff. I've tried some of the like Huawei phones and they just don't work as well. I don't know what it is. Even if the specification is similar, like same processor speed, same amount of RAM, they just don't work as well. And I think that's because Motorola uses uh, name brand uh, components here. It uses like a Snapdragon processor. I'm not really entirely sure, but I've had pretty good luck with Motorola and this phone is pretty affordable. There are a couple of downsides to this phone. The, the main one, which I think I can show you without showing you personal information. Yes, so the screen here is very, very dark. So this is on full brightness right now. And you can maybe see that, well, you might not be able to see anything because it's just so, so dark. And that's a huge downside. It's actually really quite annoying, but I haven't always had that problem with Motorola. I had, a, I think, a G7 before this and the screen was perfect. But on this G30, the, the screen is like not really usable in direct sunlight. So that's the main con with this phone. Uh, and that's one reason I'm considering selling it now and upgrading or maybe getting a different Motorola or something else. Um, but normally I just use them, use these phones till they break. And then I'll either sell the broken phone or uh, sometimes the battery just stops working and then I'll sell the phone as, you know, phone with the battery that needs replacing. Um, and usually you can get like half your money back. So that's, you know, makes that pretty affordable as well. But anyway, the other con about this phone is this button right here, which is a Google Assistant button. So when you press that, the Google Assistant comes up and asks if you need help. And then I have to close that because I don't use Google Assistant. And it's really annoying that there's a dedicated button for that. But I think a lot of phones these days have that. Um, so that is is pretty annoying, but not, not the end of the world. Actually, I think that one's a Google Assistant. I don't know. Yeah. See, that's the problem. So you don't know which is which. Um, but that's the phone and, you know, I'm not looking for something super fancy. I don't do games on this. I don't really, um, you know, do anything super intensive, but the camera is actually pretty decent. I use it for, you know, if I'm selling something or whatever. And I've also made videos using this phone and they come out really well, especially in low light situations. So overall, I, I really like this phone. I think the price is pretty good and the quality is pretty good. Um, so I'd recommend it. Okay guys, well, I know that's a little bit different from what I normally do on this channel, but I do have a lot more bike videos coming out again soon. And I just thought I'd show you guys my EDC. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.